Okay, so this is part two of week seven. Um, that's week five. I don't want that. Okay, week seven. Okay. And we are going to actually do um, an, an association analysis. Okay. So here is some data and there's five transactions. And in the five transactions, this by the way is what's called transactional data. Um, instead of like each thing being a column, you get like what the person bought. It's kind of like the receipt basically, in a strange way. So there's five transactions and this is what was purchased in each transaction. So let's say it's a store that just sells A, B, C, D, E. That's all they sell is like five items. So transaction one, they bought A, B, and C. Transaction two, they bought B, C, D, and E. Transaction three, they bought A, C, D. Again, the quantities aren't, they might've bought 10 of A, but we don't know. We just care whether they bought A or not. Um, and so this is what they bought in each of the five transactions. So the way this is set up, you can't analyze it directly. So you have to restructure it. This is where the data wrangling kind of skills come in. But, um, so this is just the same data again. I just put in Excel and, and babied it up. Okay, so here I took the data and I reformatted it. This is how it needs to look for using for association analysis. So this is your transactional data, okay, which is how you will often get this, I think, because I don't know, I'm sort of faking it because honestly, I've never done like retail sales analysis or something like that. But um, I would imagine that their data will look like this. It's called transactional data and I think that this, this does it. But what you have to do in order to do your association analysis is this. You have to take the transactions and do the individual items and then do a binary column for just put one in, don't put zero in, and I'll actually explain why. Usually you would actually fill in like one for yes and zero for no, but don't put that in there. Um, and the reason being that if you put in the zeros when you do your association analysis, it's going to analyze both cases, which you don't necessarily want because you only care about the they did purchase A, you actually don't care about the fact that they didn't. And if you put the zeros in, the at least oranges, I don't know about all other software, I only know about orange because that's all I know how to run this. Um, it will do like a bunch of analysis that you don't want on the A equals zero not bought and you don't care about the not bought situation. You're not interested in analyzing that. So just do, set up the data like this and just put ones in. So the ones correspond with transaction one, three and four bought A, so these have ones in them and then transactions one, two, and five bought B. See that? So um, it's pretty easy to sort of like program um, to do this or to set it up. That's something that we'll do in data wrangling. Again, is like actually exercises in this, but I don't want this course, I mean, we only have so much time to learn so much in each course and I don't wanna like spend 90% of the data mining course doing the data wrangling work because it's just better to just put it into a separate course. Um, the data wrangling work applies to all courses. Everybody should take data wrangling. It's not gonna be like as interesting a class in the sense that you're not learning like this super sexy kind of cool like data mining techniques, but data wrangling is like a super practical like how to repair your car kind of class. Um, so everybody should take that, but we're gonna spend like the entire course is gonna be like stuff like this. But anyways, that was an aside. So you wanna set up this data set and this is what you wanna use for association analysis. Um, you can have this in Excel and like you can do if then statements to create these flags or if it's a small data set, you can just do it by hand or whatever. It's not that hard. Um, so don't do this though. Don't put the zeros in. I actually did this when I was learning how to do this last summer and it works, but I mean, the only reason you would ever want to put the zeros in is if you actually care about the case of them not buying things, which you might, but I don't for what we're doing. So just don't put the zeros in. Okay. Um, zeros are then included in, and you include essentially bought and not bought and you make your analysis way more complicated than you want. So just don't put them in. Okay. And when you do association analysis, um, for the most part, I don't know if there are specific sales examples when it matters. What is the antecedent and consequent or arbitrary? In other words, whether somebody bought an apple and then a banana and a banana and then an apple, it's arbitrary. Um, and the other thing again is that multiple quantities don't matter. So six apples are the same as purchasing one apple because you're looking at associations. We're not analyzing quantities, which is a statistician. I'm used to like quantities and frequencies based on quantities and stuff, but we're not doing that. We're just doing it based on yes, no. Okay. Um, so once your data is all set up, you can start actually doing this. So association analysis, use the association rule A to B. 
where A and B are mutually exclusive again, no common enough. So we don't look at like bananas to bananas and we don't look at like bananas to bananas and oranges. If we're doing bananas to bananas and oranges, we do banana and orange. We don't like, we don't include bananas in both of them. So you don't want to have like apples, bananas and bananas, oranges. No, because you don't want to have the same element. They have to be mutually exclusive means they have no common elements. Okay. So support, confidence, and lift are the measures that we use as discussed in the first part of this lecture. Okay, so I then went and made another like simpler 10 transaction milk and butter database. I made this myself. I did it all by myself. Um, so I made this fake data set with 10 transactions of milk and butter because this, um, this was actually too complicated to start with. Um, it doesn't look complicated, but believe it or not, it gets pretty complicated because there's like five different things here and like there's actually a lot you can do with that. So I made an even simpler database. I made one that is just milk and butter with 10 transactions. Okay, so the customer can purchase milk alone, they can purchase butter alone, or they can purchase milk and butter, or they can purchase nothing. But we don't care about people that purchase nothing like nine because there's nothing to associate. There's no, there is no transaction to associate. So, um, here are one item item sets which are milk and butter because in this case, um, if they purchase milk alone, that's not A to B. If they purchase butter alone, that's not A to B. They can only purchase milk and butter like together. That's the only like association rule we can look at. So A, A is milk, B is butter, A is butter, B is milk. It doesn't matter. Okay. Um, there's two ways to look at the analysis depending on how you want to look at it, but that's the only thing you can get out of this. Okay. Note that there is no two item item set to analyze because we have to have at least three items to have a two item item set. Because if you only have two items, the only thing you can do is A to B. There's no way that you can do, like, neither A nor B can have more than two items because there's only two items total. So you have to have three or more items to have a two-item item set. Um, so let's first calculate support. So support is the portion of transactions that contain that item. So for milk, the support is 5 out of 10. And actually, to some extent, I did include 9 in here because it is... Um, it could have had like another item in it, but technically speaking, I almost could have left nine out and calculated it as five out of nine, but I didn't do that. Um, but anyways, so the support is the frequency. There's 10 transactions total and five have milk. So five out of 10 is the support for milk. Okay. The support for butter is six out of 10 because we have one, two, three, four, five, six. And the support for both milk and butter is this one and this one, which is two out of 10. That is the support calculation, which is pretty easy. Um, Confidence, there's actually two ways to look at. Now, conditional probability is not commutative, so the order does matter. So these, you may get different values. In some cases, they're going to be the same just by coincidence, but the probability of milk given butter is not necessarily the probability of butter given milk. Okay. So the probability of milk given butter is... Butter is six. So when we do this probability, we're restricting to just the ones that are one here. And of those, there's two that buy milk. So that's two out of six or 0.33. That's what we call confidence, which is the probability that they buy milk given that they bought butter. <laughs> it's effectively the conditional probability of buying milk. Um, the other way around, did I? The probability they buy butter given that they bought milk is gonna be two out of five because five by milk, and then two of those by butter, so that's gonna be two out of five. I didn't put that one on there, but I should have, okay. Then, we wanna look at the lift of milk to butter. In other words, um, how likely, how much are we increasing the purchase of butter given that they purchased milk? That's effectively what lift is doing. So the confidence is 0.4, which came from, um, milk to butter. Where did I get that from? Um, oh, that's the that's the probability of butter given milk. So that was the denominator here is five because that's the milk and it's two out of five. That's the point four. And then the expected confidence of butter is 0. 0.6. And that is the, just the, um, this is just literally the the, freak, the support of butter. So it's the frequency. So six out of 10 is 0. 0.6. And then the lift is the ratio of the point four to the point six. And so that comes out to be 0.66, which basically tells us that um, having bought milk really doesn't, doesn't elevate the probability of buying butter that you can see here. There's not that strong an association. Wow. 
So that's what lift is. Like guys, we do it in the reverse order, which is a separate thing because now milk is your antecedent, um, butter is your consequent, but now butter is your antecedent and milk is your consequent. So you buy butter first in this case. And so um, the confidence for this rule is 0.33. That's the probability of milk given butter. That was this, that was the six butter and then the two milks, so two out of six is 0.33. The expected confidence of milk is five out of 10 transactions and the ratio, it just turns out, does also turn it to be 0.66, which was the same as last time because um, butter and milk are not really that strongly associated according to this data. And that's what we're measuring, okay? Um, so the interpretation of milk is that butter and milk are not I mean, the interpretation of the lift ratio in this case, butter and milk are not that associated, okay? So for this very simple association analysis, there's still quite a bit of calculations, but they're pretty easy. Um, as long as you understand your basic probability, this is not too bad. Um, oops, I don't know why I hit that. Okay. So association analysis, um, the reason I did a really simple example is with association analysis, you get actually a ton of calculations. Once you get like more than two items, like we're gonna look at next, um, it gets crazy. Like it looks like there's all these little calculations. They're not particularly hard, but when you have three metrics um, and you consider like all the different permutations of like one item and two item item sets and calculating things, you do sort of get a little bit of like this, like, oh my God, there's all these calculations, but they're not like really hard. So I mean, salespeople and analysts and stuff, I think they're really skilled at just sort of fiddling through this kind of like giant output, but yeah. Um, so at this point, doing computations by hand becomes sort of um, a nightmare, even though it's only 10 transactions and three possible items for sale. So I went into orange and did this and you're like, oh my God, look at that. So what this is, is um, the antecedent can be apple, butter, or apples. Right? So you can consider these in all orders. So you can consider one item item sets, apple, butter, or apples, or milk and butter, butter and apples, or milk and apples, or all three. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six different possible things. And so you have one, apples, butter, milk, two items, two items, two items. They actually don't have, they don't have the three items in here because, um, there is one that, they don't have, oh, this one doesn't have three items because to have, to have a three item set, you need to have four items and there is no, um, in other words, the only way that you would look at a, at a, at a association rule is if you had um, four items because the only way you have a three item set is to also have another item as an antecedent, which you don't have here. But anyway, so um, I was wrong, I was wrong, I was wrong. So it's just the one item and two item item sets of which there are six of, um, yeah. So you have one apples, milk, apples, butter and milk, and then you have butter and apples, milk and apples, and milk and butter. So you have the six different possible antecedents and the same six possible consequences. But when you permute them, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve different possibilities because there's six pop there's six different like item sets, but there's two ways to think about it. So there's 12 things to calculate total. So the first one is they buy apples and then they buy butter. And now the support is gonna be the same. This is like the support for this item set, apples and butter, which if you go back here and look at, um, apples and butter is one, two, three, four. That's where they get that 40% from. Okay, so this support column, when you get the output, that's actually for like both of these combined. Orange will also run an individual, another thing where it will get support for like each item individually. Because with this support here is not gonna give you the individual like apples alone. Um, but the support here is given in this case, the apples and butter. Now the first two rows are apples and butter and butter and apples. So the support is gonna be the same because the support doesn't depend on direction. And all the others is point two like milk and butter. That's point two because if you look at the 10 transactions, um, two of them have milk and butter. And it just turns out that a lot of them are point two. So the support, um, <coughs> you could have just done like combination, like apple butter, and it would have been the same. The confidence, however, is different as is the, um, the lift. So these all calculate um, 
the support, the direction A to B, B to A is, you could kind of consider support like commutative in a weird way, but it's not really the commutative law. But the confidence is not going to be the same because the probability of B given A is not the same as probability of A given B, which is why you see um, the confidence for butter given apples is 1 and the confidence for apples given butter is 0.6. Um, so these metrics here, um, the confidence measures how likely they are to buy butter given apples, which in this case it seems like they always buy butter and apples. Is that true? Um, Yeah, so if they buy if they buy two if they buy apples, it turns out if you look at the apples, they've always bought butter. That's why you have a confidence of one. Okay. Um and so the lift ratios are low. I'm not gonna go over exactly how to calculate these, but the most likely, the highest lift ratio is apples given butter and milk. Um so that tells you that this is the one that's like strongest. Buying apples is most strongly associated with butter and milk. And you kind of have to go back and like think about the individual like transactions. And this is what like marketing and salespeople do, I guess. Um, but they're sort of helpful little metrics that tell you how things are associated. Um, so the higher the lift, the stronger the association. Um, the support really just measures popularity. And so all three of these are measures of association and sort of different ways of looking at association. And you can use them for like planning to sell people stuff. Okay. Um, so let's look at some interpretations of this. So support measures how popular an item are. So for the one item item sets that are not shown, um, these were calculated earlier. So butter, 6 out of 10 by butter, 0.6. Milk, 5 out of 10. Apples, 4 out of 10. That just comes from the frequency of the individual items. Okay. The highest support is for butter. That means it's the most popular item sold. Um, for the association rules, the support of 0.4 is for the item set of apples and bananas. That's the first two lines. I mean, apples and butter, sorry. I made a typo here. It should say butter. Um, you know I need to do this. There we go. Okay. Um, cool. That's support. So items with higher support are just more popular. Um, so you can have, like, a really low support, and then you can have something that has a really high confidence because... Even if something's not super popular, maybe like something is very often sold together. So the, the these metrics are measuring like different things. So confidence um, is impacted by the order of press antecedent and precedent. So B given A is not the same as A given B. But confidence measures the str strength of association between these two. It's um, how popular they are is not really a factor here. It's how strongly associated they are. So for confidence... Um, a confidence of one is the highest because confidence does go from zero to one. Because confidence and support are probability values. The highest value you can possibly get is one. A support of one would mean, by the way, that everybody bought that item, which I don't know, maybe it happens sometimes. But confidence of one is the highest you can get. And that means that everybody that bought butter also bought apples, um, which is nice. Anyways, so recall that association rule A... Um, a to B, where A and B are mutually exclusive. A and B are items or item sets, um, and we can consider rules such as milk to butter, or we can consider rules such as milk and butter to apples, where this is like considered an item set. And we can analyze all of these metrics on that. So for lift, a way to interpret it would be that um, the strongest lift here is 2.5, um, which isn't huge, but that is the biggest association. So the association rule milk to butter to apples indicates the purchase of apples is strongly associated with having purchased milk and butter. So Lyft gives you like an indicator of like if they purchase this, they're really likely to purchase this if you have a high lift. So that's like a marketing ploy kind of thing. Um, lift values above one indicate the antecedent is associated with the consequent more often than expected. A high lift value indicates a strong association, which means you can sell your items together. Um, lift is not bound by zero to one because it's not a probability value. Okay. So yeah. And then our final thing is to look at practical applications of association analysis, such as market basket analysis. Um, market basket analysis, I think is a really huge thing in sales and marketing, which is one of the reasons why I think business students should be in a data mining class. Cause, um, particularly like business students in marketing, that will be doing some type of like analyzing stuff that sells because I think that's what you guys do like for a living. Um, 
So analyzing buying behavior and preparing selling strategies, which of course ultimately results in you or your company making more money, which is the whole part of the game. Okay. Other applications of association may mean to, um, to work with fraud detection to look at um, unusual patterns. So maybe like certain purchases are associated with like fraudulent transactions. Um, fraudsters, I guess, buy certain things or do certain things. Um, healthcare, again, the, the issue of like symptoms that can go together that are associated with like a certain like COVID associated with certain like losing tastes and things like that. Um, and so um, this association analysis, I think it's really cool. Um, I never used this before. I have to tell the truth. I mean, I'm not like cluster analysis I've used for like 20 years. I mean, not continuously, but clusters analysis is like, it's in my master's degree, like, you know. Um, but association analysis, I think is super cool. And I think business students should really learn this. Um, it's not hard either. Anyways, cool. So that is the end of the like theory part of association analysis.